Welcome everybody, and especially those who are far away but who follow this service weekly. It's a privilege to know that you're tuning in. Now today we're celebrating the festival of St Peter and St Paul. It's actually tomorrow, but we celebrate it today, the nearest Sunday. And St Peter and Paul are two saints after whom this church was named. And what of the sword and the key? Well, you'll find these symbols on shields and art somewhere inside any church that's called St. Peter and St. Paul's. You see, when you take charge of a new house, you're given the keys from the previous owner and you follow in the previous owner's footsteps in maintaining and caring for the house. And Jesus passed the care of his church onto Peter just before Jesus ascended. Hence the key symbol in art forms for St Peter. As for the sword, ah, well, this represents St Paul who was beheaded for his faith, beheaded in Rome. More about these things in a moment. So the news, well first the government has said that churches can prepare to open for normal services in July. But we can't open yet for normal services until we've had more guidance from our bishops and the Church of England. Things like guidance about how many folk are allowed in and how we're to go about conducting communion, weddings and baptism given the virus situation. So we're still doing virtual communion until then. But the church is open for private prayer during the weekdays from 9.30 to 1.30. And do ring if you want to catch up or pop by to have a socially distanced chat over coffee in the rectory garden. And the dogs won't bite, promise you. And follow the church Facebook page or our website Facebook page Newport Pagnell Parish Church. And the intercessions today are written by Kimini Nichols, who is the church warden, one of the two church wardens. So thank you, Kimini. Myself and Moira are in the parish church today because it's the patronal festival of St Peter and St Paul's Newport Pagnell. And the last time we were here on Ascension Day, so many of you are glad to see the inside of the church again, even though we're not allowed yet to gather together for worship. But anyway, let's, let's come before God. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. And almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we bring our mortal natures before God. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for St. Peter and St. Paul. Almighty God, whose blessed apostles Peter and Paul glorified you in their death as in their life, 
grant that your church, inspired by their teaching and example, and made one by your spirit, may ever stand firm upon the one foundation, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We have the first reading, which one of the ones set for today, St. Peter and St. Paul, is from the book of two, uh, uh, two the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4. If you put these instructions before the brethren, you will be a good minister in Christ Jesus, nourished on the words of the faith and of the good doctrine which you have followed. Have nothing to do with godless and silly myths. Train yourself in godliness, for while bodily training is of some value, Godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, for to this end we toil and strive, because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Saviour of all men, especially those who believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he put this question to his disciples. Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say he is John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But you, he said, who do you say I am? Then Simon Peter spoke up. You are the Christ, he said, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, Simon, son of Jonah, you are a happy man, because it was not flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. So I now say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be considered loosed in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Have you ever had to work with someone that you don't particularly click with? Someone who you're not at war with maybe, but, but they're just not the sort of person uh, that you'd be willing to invite to coffee at your house or your birthday party. Well, it seems to me that Peter and Paul were very much like that, like that with each other. They were very different people from very different backgrounds. Peter was a fisherman who was probably illiterate and uneducated. His heart was in Galilee and he initially had difficulty living out his faith for Jesus. Remember he denied Jesus three times before Jesus' crucifixion and he was often rash too and impulsive. He was known for opening his mouth before engaging his brain. And Jesus made some jokes about him too because of this. People often forget Jesus' sense of humour. Peter was the guy who lived in the same town all his life and wasn't initially well travelled at all. He wasn't as quick thinking as Paul, but he sort of got there in the end. And what of Paul? <clears throat> well, he was very different. He was an intellectual who had a Roman citizenship. He was well-educated. He was articulate. He was well-travelled and he spoke a variety of languages. He knew about the law 
and how to speak to Roman governors too, and was fearless in getting across what he believed. He had, though, a particularly shocking history in that he formally persecuted Christians and was responsible for putting many of them to death. Not like Peter at all. Well, Peter and Paul did actually meet, but it was a scratchy meeting. Let's put the account in Galatians 2, not on the readings today, but one of them about these two. Let's put it into everyday English. In Antioch, they had a bit of a blowout with each other. Paul accused Peter, now in Cephas, of sucking up to the religious conservative leaders who were insisting that to be a Christian convert, people had to first go through various Jewish rituals like circumcision. Now Paul told Peter here to his face that he was being a hypocrite, since this wasn't what Peter, what Peter had actually been preaching. Peter had preached salvation through faith. And then he backpedalled when the bigwigs came up from Jerusalem to find out what was going on. Paul said that Peter had caved in to those who were peddling the worst sort of religious legalism. Paul was incensed and basically accuses Peter of currying favour with the religious hierarchy. It's never very nice, is it, to see this sort of thing going on in any walk of life. People currying favour out of fear. You can read all about it in Galatians chapter 2. But it's why I love scripture. Because these bumps and arguments along the way aren't airbrushed out of Christian history. But give Peter his due. As the then leader of the Christian church, he eventually recognised that Paul was right and that he had been wrong. Maybe he recognised that he had again lacked courage to stand up and be counted, just like when he denied Christ three times during Jesus' arrest and how he got all worried and afraid of the big wigs from Jerusalem. You see, you don't change overnight. It takes time, even for leaders and Peter himself. But why are Peter and Paul, these two very different personalities, so important to the life of the church? Other saints and martyrs are important too, but perhaps none more so than these two. Well, they both reveal two different but equally important ways in which the church operates. These two ways are summed up by the terms organisation and evangelism. The educated, articulate, mobile, well-travelled Paul was primarily an evangelist. He travelled all over the place, debating, preaching, engaging with the pagan religious leaders of the day, from the streets right up into the seats of Roman government. He knew how to adapt the faith appropriately into different cultures. He knew what helped a knowledge of God in a particular culture and what to challenge in that culture too. Paul preached the message and then he moved on to another town, another place, another journey, reaching as many people as possible in his extensive travels. And without God appointing Paul, the gospel may never have been spread. And to this day, the church could have been just a small religious group in the Middle East. Evangelism is crucial. 
Now, Peter was one whose focus was to establish and nurture Christian communities once they'd been planted, once they'd emerged, once they'd responded to the gospel. Peter was the one who organised the church at a local level so that people could grow into the faith wherever they were, wherever they lived. His was a ministry that promoted the presence of the pastor or the local leaders so that there was a continuity of gospel growth and nurture where people lived after the evangelists had gone. Imagine being introduced to buying a, a great car. Someone persuades you to buy a certain car because it's the best. You buy it and you think, yeah, it is a great car and you never see the salesman again. Maybe you're glad you brought the car, but in time it will need a service, won't it? New tyres and new exhaust. Who deals with that? Well, your local garage. The friendly local mechanic who knows you and your car history. He's there to see you through your maintenance issues on a daily basis in the town where you live. So the Petrine ministry, the ministry of Peter, is about leading the local church, building it up, establishing it, and laying down the roots where once evangelization had taken place, that message that brought you to the Lord. Peter's ministry was the rock of stability through his leadership. And Billy Graham did this, didn't he? Remember him, he recently died, the great evangelist, once folk had accepted the Lord through his big evangelical meetings, there was a system organised to direct people to their local churches, whatever denomination they were, so that people could then be nurtured and grow once Billy Graham had left town. The Petrine ministry provides a source of stable authority and a body of core Christian beliefs which can be handed on to the next generation. So we need both Pauline and Petrine ministry. It's healthy to have both. If everything is Petrine and concerned only with organisation, establishment and private local nurture, then the church could become petrified, <laughs> over-established, only concerned with local issues, inward looking and forgetting to actually adapt appropriately to the wider world, the world that we should be also evangelising to. But if everything is Pauline, all evangelism, then there's no organisation or structure. The evangelist moves on and different groups of converts are left with no rudder, no rudder to teach or to nurture them or to connect them with the rest of Christendom. Such communities can then develop their own ideas in time, locally, based upon their own culture. They can end up splitting and fragmenting in the absence of any guidance or any reference to wider worship, a wider church or a wider body of knowledge. Even countries without any form of government can lapse into lawlessness and anarchy. It can happen in a religious way too, since all human organisations need a leader or a leadership. They need a point of security to pull people back on track when their ideas about God are getting seriously wonky from being in the same place for too long. And that's the way humans are made. God appoints leaders and shepherds because we need coaching and nurturing. And so do shepherds and leaders, by the way. So here we are at St Peter and St Paul. The patronal message 
today is to embrace the ministry of Peter and Paul. We need the organisation and nurturing leadership that is Petrine, and we need to reach out or evangelise, which is the Pauline part of ministry. When we embrace Peter and Paul in this way, well, then there's an energy and a spiritual power that breaks new ground in the world. We need the new and the establishment and all that both offer. Peter and Paul did a bit of both, but their focus was on one thing rather than another, and they complement each other. In Christian art, since Peter and Paul are often depicted as embracing each other as a sign of this. Now, some of you are good pastors and nurturers, and others are better evangelists. You overlap sometimes, but you're better at one thing than another. And this shows how God uses people with very different personality types and skills, but both are committed to witnessing to Jesus. And this leads to a vibrant and effective church. The word for witness in New Testament Greek is martyr, which means martyr or one who dies for the faith. And both Peter and Paul died for their Lord Jesus. Very different men. They both died for the Lord Jesus. Peter crucified upside down and Paul was beheaded. And so finally we're back to that critical question in the Gospel reading. The one Jesus asked his disciples at Caesarea of Philippi, which was the centre of pagan pilgrimage to visit Roman and Greek gods and statues. Jesus says to them, Who do men say that I am? And they said, well, some say you're a prophet, others a teacher, some just a good bloke. Hmm, said Jesus, but who do you say that I am? Well, after a heck of a personal journey for two very different men, Peter and Paul both proclaimed that Jesus is Lord, the God on earth who died for and they were both executed, Peter and Paul. But we have to respond to the same question. Whether you are more of a Peter or more of a Paul in your ministry, who do you say that Jesus is? Amen. Let's pray. This morning, the response to Lord hear us is Lord graciously hear us. Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son Jesus Christ to hear us when we pray in faith. We give you thanks for the life and witness of your faithful servants, Peter and Paul. Fill your church today with that steadfast love and faith. Grant us the boldness to preach the gospel wherever you lead us and to make disciples of all nations. Touch the hearts of all who have entered in the past week this parish church of St Peter and St Paul here in Newport Pagnell. May they find the hope and joy of your saving grace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen. Give wisdom to all in authority Direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. We hold before you the people of Yemen, and for all refugees and those caught up amid civil unrest, both near and far. We pray for the people of Brazil, where the coronavirus is particularly rife. Give them courage and hope in their troubles. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. 
We give thanks for many selfless acts of kindness we have seen in recent weeks from both friend and stranger. We continue to pray for all who are working together to fight the pandemic, the healthcare workers, the support staff and volunteers, and all those working to find a vaccine and drugs. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, especially all who are still shielding alone at home, all who are suffering with the long-term effects of COVID-19, and the many young people who are suffering with their mental health. Enfold each one of them in your loving embrace that they may know your presence and healing touch. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember those who have gone before us in the peace of Christ and their families and friends whom they have left behind in this world. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Peter, St. Paul, and of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the, the sake, sake of, of your, your Son, Son, our Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. before the peace for those of you who do come into the church to sit and ponder and pray in the week there is a prayer cross with yellow request prayer request labels on and you stick them into the cross and they are gathered up during the week at the moment we can't meet as a team as a prayer group it's very difficult because of the virus but I do I do collect them up the prayer requests and I take them home and I pray for every request that people have put on those yellow tabs so please do use that facility which is in the, in the Lady Chapel. And anything that's written is treated confidentially. So let's share the peace that we pray for for others during the week and we pray it, share it with each other today. And so God is love and those who live in love live in God and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. As the grain once scattered in the fields, and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside, and now reunited on this table in bread and wine, so, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. Amen. And the Lord is here. His, His Spirit, Spirit is, is with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give, give thanks, thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed Welcome us to sit and eat, eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him, and he in us. He, he opened, opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which he shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him, 
His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As, As we, we eat and drink these holy gifts, make, make us one in Christ, our risen, risen Lord. Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And so as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we break this bread, to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Almighty God, we thank, we thank you, you for feeding us, us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So, go in peace, celebrate today all of those whose churches are named after St. Peter and St. Paul, or do it anyway to these great two leaders of the church. So, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.